allegory and initiates of the benevolent divine. A direct message from Count Saint Germain, and Master Jesus. This message is a reference of Basie Francis' Encyclopedic Discoveries. The Hermetic tradition has long been concerned about the relationship between the inner world of our consciousness and the outer world of nature. Between the microcosm and macrocosm, the below and the above, the material and the spiritual, the centric and peripheral. Verily, we can all agree that everyone on earth was born with a divine spark, at least for the majority of those breathing in and out. Whereas it may sound factual, we all have one job to do, which is to contribute to the growth of the divine body. I understand properly and not to despise the discipline of several and diverse cultures, ethics, religion, organizations, belief system etc. The journey of life draws our attention to individuation, personalization and creation of your contribution to the whole. So whether you choose to follow the crowd or not, the account, rewards and remarks for our earthly lives will be demanded in the afterlife. Needless to say, the goal of individuation is to create a chain that links our inner spark of consciousness with all the facet of the great world. There's a spark that lights up everything within you, one must find it and more importantly, use it to create the lives which they desire. The world is clearly designed as a plutonic and metaphysical clockwork, through which our inner world is linked to the highest unity of the divine. Typically we don't have till eternity to accomplish our mission here on earth, cause we are limited by time. Time to learn and unlearn. While we walk this path called earth, there's always a mighty hand that reaches out from the unseen, to assist and regulate the affairs of man. Who could that be? Well, let's find out. The complex anatomy of life births the ideal nature of benevolent divine ethics, moralities of Christ consciousness and the vast complexity of true spiritual practices, to stay in synchronicity with the God and nature in you. God cannot be seen outside of oneself, unless he admits to the subjection of ignorance. The Bible made a reference to this in John 4 verse 4 saying, Ye are of God, my little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. This epitomized verse of the Bible gave clarity to its believers with the urgency to seek fulfillment from within and not without. If we properly adhere to this warning, we can avoid calamity and disastrous events that could likely leave us in distorted realities, illusions and delusions, and save us from abyss. The world has been taught wrongly, making believers weak and codependent. I see a lot of people running around looking for solutions to their problems without first looking for answers within. The Christ we seek outside of us created false awareness of the divine, which has automatically paved the lesser expression of the divine in us. And above all reasonable doubts, when we choose to become an embodiment of the God within, we should be totally dependent on Him, not codependent, but dependent. When Jesus said I am the way He did not mean we should follow Him in a religious context, rather He emphasized strongly on becoming an embodiment of the I am, that is in you. We all carry the divine presence of the power that formed us. Thus, the awakening process of oneself into Christ by the means of spirituality is the death and rebirth of oneself, enabling the God-self to emerge to the outward character, which is your physical body and other to express your God-given powers, gifts and abilities. I think it's crucial that I inform and not deform you with this sacred knowledge, to govern the code ethics of mankind. The God within you is genderless, not male, or female. But because we all have polarities as physical beings, every being has the masculine and feminine personalities. And if you properly study the laws of creation, you'd see that the left side of your body governs the feminine aspect whereas the right side governs the masculine aspect. The moment we incarnated into this physical avatar which is our body, we're subjected to the law of gender. Now, it is not a mandatory necessity to identify as a specific gender, rather, it's our choice to decide that for ourselves because we have the power of free will. Before we experience spiritual awakening, we've been operating out of mere awareness and that is the acceptance of any information that has been fed to us, without first analyzing such information to see if it's something that would be of helpful, in order to build and expand our God selves. And so, we dilute anything that we want to hear with heightened ignorance, and totally discard what we need to hear because it paints the picture of a mirrored reflection of who we are and what we are. No one wants to look at themselves because it's a scary thing to do, and I get it. Our past is messed up, we don't ever want to visit that place anymore. Because any time we do, we only end up hurting ourselves more. Our past is traumatic, it's hell, it's pain, and I get it. You might be feeling guilty, ashamed or in regret because of what you've done and experienced in the past. I understand from a deeper perspective because I've also been there. You see, I knew my past wasn't something that I could ever survive from. Because I lived recklessly, maliciously and stupidly. I saw drugs, sex and theft as a means of survival and fun, because that was what I grew up witnessing. Matter of fact, I was raised in the hood and obviously the life in the hood is bloodthirsty. I wasn't born into a rich home, so I had to look for a means to survive even if it means stealing that of another. But something happened in my life that left me questioning my total existence, I had this nudge in my spirit that I am meant for greater things and my purpose was higher, but I couldn't figure what that could be until I had my spiritual awakening, then I was forced to look at myself because I always blamed everyone for the wrongs and the bad events in my life. 
I was so excited to be egotistical of myself, and I really do not care if another person is hurting as long as I could benefit from them. So my world came crumbling, I lost all that I had. The money, reputation, cars, investments etc. This phase of my life left me with two choices, to either go to God or sell my soul to the devil. But then, I don't want to live my life for tips and change from the devil, because I know that he will take my soul after a short period of time. Something kept ringing in my spirit that my destiny is different and there's a call upon my life that I need to answer. And so, I went into solitude and isolation with God. There and then I had to face my shadow self, to heal, forgive, unlearn what I was wrongfully taught, and made to believe from my childhood. I began to seeking the right wisdom based on divine guidance. I know it could sound brief and easy, but it's not so easy as it sounds. You need patience and obedience in this process. Ultimately you need a helping hand and a good friend that will always be there to help you. And that is Jesus Christ. He is the only person that heals, loves and supports unconditionally. He is my biggest fan, because he loved me first even before I could love him back. Can you imagine what kind of love that is? So my dearest friend, I want you to also walk your path with Christ. Believe me you can't do it on your own based on your knowledge and understanding. You can't pick yourself up when you fall because you have no strength on your own. But with the support of the divine, you can go far, run far and achieve bigger goals than you could imagine. You can break curses, addictions, ties, chains, bonds and yokes that could be keeping you back from reaching greatness. You can defeat strong men, strongholds, demons, entities that's standing in your way. That's why Psalm 23 verse 4 says, For his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for thou is with me. It does make sense now, isn't it? Think about it, pray about it and ask the divine for clarity. I wish you the best of luck in your own journey. Always reach out to me through my social media handles listed in the description box below. I'd be more than glad to offer you personal assistance and advice if necessary. Thank you for listening, my name is Bazzi Francis. You have a wonderful day.